Ladies and gentlemen, I am Israel, the game is World of Warships. It is 20 past 1 on Friday the 19th of January 2018. This is going to be something of a quickie. Wargaming have sent over a couple of new ships for me to test out and play with and show off to you. The work in progress HMS Cossack, no it's not the Hyeda, and also the French Tier 8 battleship Gascon. However, priority for today is the Cossack. This is, well, this is the Cossack. She's a British tribal class destroyer. Some 31 of these were planned, 27 of them were built and served with the Royal Australian and Royal Canadian navies, as well as the Royal Navy itself. There is one survivor to this day, the aforementioned HMCS Haida. She is a museum ship up in Ontario, if I remember correctly. Unfortunately, I believe there were some licensing issues, so Canadian players, sorry, you guys are going to have to wait a little bit. Cossack, however, well, she ran up a fair bit of distinction herself. She was involved in the hunt for the Bismarck, mind you, so was about every Allied vessel in the Atlantic over the, that 48-hour period. She was also present at the Second Battle of Narvik, assisting Warspite and several other destroyers in giving eight dis German destroyers what can only be described as a sound bullying. Warspite's aircraft also claiming a U-boat that was unlucky enough to be in the area at the time. Her most distinctive action, however, was also her first, and she was solo for this one. This was the Altmark incident. The German freighter Altmark had been making a run down the Norwegian coastline with prisoners that had been taken by the Graf Spee during her commerce raiding in the South and Northern Atlantics. When she was caught, there had been some signals intercepts, the Admiralty knew she was transporting POWs, and the Cossack intercepted her in Norwegian waters. Now, at the time, Norway was neutral, and there was no legal bar on using neutral waters to move POWs. Thing was, however, that when the Norwegians had asked at British prompting, because of course we had the signals intercepts, we knew perfectly well the Altmark was carrying POWs, when the Norwegians asked the crew of the Altmark just what they were doing, the Altmark's crew lied. They said it was purely a commercial run, no prisoners of war on board whatsoever, no military activities at all. So the Norwegians took a quick look around the deck, said, OK, cheers, and left. And the British said, try that again. So they did. They came aboard, said, are you sure you're not doing anything warlike? Absolutely nine. Um, okay, fine, we'll just take a quick look round. Uh, nothing to see here. No 200 odd prisoners of war. Fine, all good, cheers. Flashback to Britain saying, no, you're absolutely wrong about this, guys. Look again. So they did it a third time, and after that third time, convinced that the British were losing their patience, put an escort on the Altmark. At which point, on the 16th of February 1940, the Cossack gets involved under the command of Philip Vian. And Cossack basically turns around to the Norwegian government under orders from Winston Churchill, who was First Lord of the Admiralty at the time, and basically says, right, we're going to do this as a joint enterprise, we're going to search her properly, and if you have any problems with this, I am simply going to take the matter into my own hands, and I would suggest you don't interfere, because I outgun you by a considerable margin. You're a couple of torpedo boats, and I'm a fully armed and operational tribal class destroyer, so don't push it, sunshine. I think it may have been a little politer than that. However, the Cossack boarded the Altmark. There was some bayonet fighting before the crew managed to subdue the Altmark's crew, investigated the ship's holds thoroughly this time, and surprise, surprise, British prisoners of war in the holds. Hmm. However, this did not go down very well with anyone. The Norwegians protested the breach of their neutrality. The Germans started regarding the Norwegian's neutrality is unreliable, which led eventually to the invasion of Norway, and even the Allies looked a bit askance at the Norwegians and had their own contingency plans in place, just in case, because one of the main things running along the Norwegian coast was the Swedish iron ore trade, which Germany needed pretty badly to keep its war machine going. So when the Germans did eventually invade Norway, well, better a conquered ally than an uncertain enemy. In game, however, we have got the Cossack as she kind of stood for most of her later career. She has got three twin 120mm, 4.7 inch mounts. Now, Wiki notes that these were dual purpose, but 
Interestingly, they're not in the game, so I'm not sure if that's going to be something that's tweaked in later. She also has a dual 102mm battery. That was a later modification. That, that was originally a fourth 4.7 inch dual mount, but after several destroyers, most notably the Afridi and the Gurkha, were sunk by Luftwaffe bombers, the Royal Navy took the decision to do a bit of a retrofit, upgrade the flak, and trade off a bit of surface firepower to get that done. And rather like the Akizuki, she only has a single torpedo launcher, so <laughs> oh wow, this thing is almost pure gunboat at tier 7. As for the rest of her stats, baseline survivability 14,800, it's a tier 7, that's decent I suppose, but I do not want to be on the wrong end of say a Benson or a Fletcher. Artillery, 3x2, 120mm guns, 12 rounds per minute per gun, 18 seconds for 180 degrees is decent, 12km firing range, okay. My real concern is going to be the performance of the high explosive round. 120mm HE will penetrate 20mm of armour just about. It may only do 19, depends how the rounding works. So we'll see how that goes. 8% fire chance is pretty good. So once we augment her up with a couple of signals and a captain, we might have a decent little fire starter here. Secondary armament, yes, destroy with secondaries, 4.5 kilometer range, but only two guns, but 20 rounds per minute, firing a 35 pound high explosive round. Of course, tier seven, well, since when did you ever take secondary gunner skills on a destroyer. I mean, one mount is not worth getting manly secondaries. The torpedoes are the 533mm, 96 second reload, pretty standard, 533mm Mark 9 star, 15,000 damage, 8 km range, again, decent but not great for tier 7. The Akatsuki and the Shiatsu, of course, at the same tier, are packing the 10 km range torpedoes, and I think their warheads do higher damage as well, but Longer reload, of course. Akatsuki mitigates that with having triple tubes. I assume we'll find out in game shortly, of course, whether or not the Cossack can pull the patent single shot mode that the other British torpedo armed ships can do. Anti air defense, as noted, for 12.7 machine guns. I mean, honestly, you might as well throw harsh language. 40mm Vickers 2 pounders, 11 damage to 2 kilometers. A single 40mm gun that unfortunately is not the Swedish Bofors, it's a quad pom pom mount, 13 DPS to 2.5, and the aforementioned dual purpose 102s. As I noted, according to Wiki, the 120mm guns were also supposedly dual fire capable and had high angle mounts in the fire control computer to allow anti air fire, but they're not capable of it in the game. Maybe we'll see them added later. Speed is meh at 36 knots. Rudder shift tolerable, 3.6 seconds. Turning circle's pretty good, 610 meters for such a big ship. And detectability is, well, it could be worse. In fact, 6.6 .6 kilometers baseline is, with camo is pretty good. With concealment expert, that'll come down to six flat. So she will outspot a Fubuki, she'll outspot an Akatsuki. She'll get outspotted by any of the tier 8 plus destroyers, except the Russians, of course, because they get the extra 10% off the concealment module. So, let's pop in a decent captain. We'll just borrow the one off Minotaur, because, hey, basic firing training, advanced firing training, technically manual AA, but who cares, and most importantly, concealment expert. And then let's fit up her module. So, consumables are what you'd expect. Premium Damcon... Yay for sales. Smoke launcher. Yoink. Looks like 20 second month. That looks like standard smoke to me. Could be wrong about that. What's the work time on it? 85 second duration and 20 second work. Eh, tolerable enough. And of course an engine boost, which is the standard plus 8%. So with all of those fitted, let's also plug in some upgrades. I think it's pretty much standard across the board here. So mag mod because detonation is bad. Engine boost mod because destroyer. And we'll also have an... Actually, no, what's the dispersion on those guns? 122 meters. You know what? That is... Well, we aiming systems mod one, I suppose. 
Uh, I suppose it does speed up the torpedo traverse, if nothing else. I was kind of tempted to go for main battery to help the main battery traverse, but... Well, we can try it later. And also, torpedo beat mod 2 to get the rudder shift down to 2.9. So, pretty decent, all things told. And the AA rating's up to 24. Boosted the damage a little. Also, popped the range up. 6 kilometers on the long-range gun. So, you're going to need to remember to switch these off. Her air detection's only 3.5. Exterior. Well, let's just plug in the usual for a destroyer, shall we? Oh, yes. Standard type... Tier 7 premium camo, type 10, usual bonuses. Nothing spectacular there. And if we plug in, well, let's go for a Sierra mic. And we'll also have Burnination. Uh, could go for anti-debt since I'm taking a risk. We'll also have some extra flooding. Ooh. I Did I load? Nope. There we go. Proper Juliet Charlie. And I think that pretty much covers the essentials. All right. Let's get her into battle. Absolute first battle, first impressions. Let's see how she does. And matchmaking's... Ah, that's pretty kind. 5-7 split. There's a Gaja Marder, of course. And, well, the Gajas were N-class destroyers. So they actually came after the Cossack. The British swung back to a torpedo-focused design. They've also got an Akatsuki, who I could probably bully. They've got a Gallant. That will be a very interesting matchup, given the similarity in armaments. Gerda might be problematic. Uh, the Miyoko definitely will be, and the battleships, well, they're British battleships, so this could be a lot worse. Okay, and we're on the west side, on the 3-4 line. So, standard tactics from here, I think. Yeah, let's go for B. Try and get some open water. Yeah, yeah new premiums incoming. So, angle for B, run her up to speed, steady the course, and plug in the turbines. What OP gimmick does it have? It, it doesn't, not really, is the answer to that one. <laughs> Not really, they're talking about the Roma. Okay, right, let's plug in the engine boost, see what this thing's absolute top speed is. Should be something in the low 40s. Okay, past 40 knots without too much trouble. 40.4, 40.5, are we going to get 41? Uh -huh. No, I don't think we're going to get 41. Looks like it's tapping out at 40.6, which... For a tier 7 destroyer sprinting, well, at this point you've still got the standard battleships, the 21 not American designs floating around, so it's decent. But again, if you get up-tiered in this thing, I wouldn't want to run from a Fletcher or a Benson. Or a Russian. That would be an extremely uneven fight. So, coming down into point B. And right... Doesn't look like any serious action. Let's also have a look at this torpedo launcher. Widespread and synchro. Wow. Okay, so it's either feast or famine. You have an ultra widespread, or you have the narrow single shot mode. Okay, that's interesting. Don't get me wrong, shotgun mode has its uses. No, normally point blank with the likes of a Gaja Mada, but I was expecting to get the conventional around about five degrees spread, not the wide one, as the option to single shot. So, well, we'll see how it goes. And there's the gallant. What ho, fellow British destroyer. Let us see which, who comes off better in this contest of arms. Right, you know what, let's jam the rudder, reverse the guns. If he's, ex he lasts, did he actually see me at all? I don't think he did. So, 50-50 as to which way he's looking around this corner, and the Gerda and the Gaja are both over in point C. Fine, well, he's seen me now. Hello, destroyer. Oh, right, okay. Turret traverse, not brilliant. 
and one, two, three, and four. An angle to avoid his own torpedoes, and boom. Okay, so two torpedoes needed to sink a tier six destroyer. That's kind of expected from 533s at this stage. Those 15,000 damage torps, yeah, well, if you're used to the Japanese 610s, they're a little bit anemic. However, minute 15 on the reload, and there's a new mechs to hunt. Of course, the real problem is that you can't execute a single devastating strike against a battleship with this thing, and even cruisers might be able to soak some of your torpedoes. It took two to put down that destroyer, so yeah, torps are a little anemic. I'm very tempted to say, oh, hello, Akatsuki. Right, let's start a gun drill, shall we? And, right, firing angle on that number three turret is absolutely abysmal. Ballistics are tolerable. Better off just getting nose into this guy and forgetting the aft turret, I think. Chop the speed a bit. He's going to be popping his torpedoes, of course. Okay, Missed midships there. Drop the aim a touch. And okay, time for torpedo beats. There we go, so just there. And there'll be a. Th I only saw two off that watch, so there'll be trouble coming in here. Boom, got him right. Pop smoke. Time to disappear before everything else gets ideas. And oh, yeah, there we go. Suicide salver from the Akatsuki. But I had the brakes on, so no real problems there. Eh. Guns feel tolerable. I mean, I need to pop the Mayhan out to get a feel for it. It's been a while since I used one of the Tier 7 American DDs. But, yeah. At this point, I'm tempted to say, given the appalling arc on the stern turret, that going back to, to the Tribal's really early configuration, dropping the 102 dual purpose for a fourth... 120 mil dual turret might be a better thing for her. Also, launch arcs on the torpedo launcher, well, it's probably the funnels right in front of them aren't brilliant either. Very good to the stern, but if you're bow on, you're not looking for trouble there. Oh, hello, Mutsuki. Alright, let's have some fun with the uh, Little Miss Denial. Oh, she's popped fish. Popped smoke, rather. Probably has launched fish as well. But, yeah. Okay, ballistics and muzzle velocity, tolerable. I think it's the best way to describe these 4-inch guns. I suspect they'd be bad at long range, but let's jink away something else. Oh, hello, Miyoko. And Flak, well, honestly, you might as well not bother. So, hard starboard. Hope I don't eat too much high X. Thank you. Plug in the engine boost. Let's go bully this tier 5 destroyer. Also, the Mexico is coming around the corner. I don't have a good torpedo shot in passing and anyway Lebechan is going to have a go there but I might get a torpedo shot at the Miyoko single shot bow on could maybe make that work but I think the Mutsuki has just turned and run at full speed so pursuing like this may not be the wisest decision and of course in the process I've lost contact with the Miyoko so I can't judge a torpedo shot there I know he's coming round the flank and oh hello Mutsuki Okay, fine. So you want to be like that, do you? Well, let's just kick into your own smoke. Take advantage. And right, there's the... Ouch! Right, okay. Torpedo shots. And okay, he is in a defensive turn. So, oh, second days have engaged. Unfortunately, I just shot out of the Mutsuki's smoke. And there's the Mutsuki as well. Okay, this is not going to be survivable. However, 20 seconds. Yeah, that... The arc on that number three turret. The number one and two turrets are okay, but number three is not brilliant. Let's just get the wriggle on and see if I can't get shots into that new mechs. Okay, torpedoes away. Two seconds. One. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Pop smoke. Come on, come on, come on. Break. Damn. <laughs> oh, well. And I think he's going to make enough stern weight to dodge the torpedoes as well. Unless he reverses and tries to go forwards into his turn. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe... No. Oh, well. Okay, so... 
Snap first impressions from eight minutes of action, one death, and a couple of kills. Hmm. Okay, Sternok on the number three turret. No, thank you. Um, if they, I realise that's the limit of the design and where the turret is placed and what else is there. But if that, we're not going to have the dual purpose. 4.7s that they supposedly had according to wiki can we please have that fourth turret back would be my first inclination as it stands against a competent akatsuki driver i'm not sure a tribal would do very well in a gunfight because well let's look at the numbers quickly the akatsuki do 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 do, do. where's she gone uh, there she is, Akatsuki. So, same number of barrels. Better positioned, arguably, since she's got four barrels astern rather than four barrels ahead. But we'll assume broadside to broadside for the moment. More hit points on the tribal, of course, the Cossack. But the main battery on the Japanese... Okay. Yeah, basically, you are relying on rate of fire to do this for you. The Japanese guns are arguably more accurate... They hit harder by about 20%, but the Cossack really does rely on her rate of fire. And of course, it's a lot easier because of the turret layout to get this stern turret into play. And of course, Akatsuki packs more than twice as many torpedoes, and they are about the same speed, longer ranged, and pack a significantly heavier wallop. They also reload faster because they're triples rather than quads. Ugh. So I'll do a more detailed video when I've had an evening with her. I will probably do a stream with both her and the Gascon at some point, but first impressions are that she's capable. But if I run into a competent Akatsuki driver or a Mehan, or heaven forfend anything up tiered, she is going to suffer very, very badly as a gunboat, and lacking a torpedo reload booster and a, or a second launcher, which historically she never had, the tribals were conceived as gunboats, she's not going to be that good as a uh, not-quite-submarine either, a torpedo terror. So, hmm, yes, maybe switch back to the earlier config if we're not going to get those dual-purpose main battery guns. Because right now, anti-air on a destroyer, yeah, all it's really there for is to tell the enemy bomber pilots exactly where to aim. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, f farewell.